I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 59, hopefully all 21 verses. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Hmm. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Man, he's laying it out, ain't he? They hatch cockroaches' eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their work. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting from destruction are in their path. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. Mm -hmm. We stumble at noonday, as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We, we roar like bears, and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. And transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. The judgment is turned away backward, and justice and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto them, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, 
my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart of thy shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Yeah, they are in a sad spot. Mm. And you know, are we are we ultimately responsible for our actions and, and stuff? Yes, a Christian is. We are. Um, and um, and choose, he, choose ye this day mm, who you will serve. Yeah. Choice, responsibility. And he Action. saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Nobody praying for them. With that, let's go to here. He titles this, Holiness versus Hardness Towards God. Um, and back to verse 16. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. We've talked a lot about intercessor, intercessory prayer. What's an intercessor? Um, Yep. <clears throat> well, in the in the scripture there, there was nobody praying. Uh, holiness versus hardness towards God. The reason many of us leave off praying and become hard towards God is because we have only a sentimental interest in prayer. It sounds right to say that we pray. We read books on prayer, which tells us that prayer is beneficial, that our minds are quieted and our souls uplifted when we pray. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. But Isaiah implies that God is amazed at such thoughts of prayer. Worship and intercession must go together. The one is impossible without the other. Intercession means we rouse ourselves up to get the mind of Christ about the one for whom we pray. Too often, instead of worshiping God, we construct statements as to how prayer works. Are we worshiping or are we in dispute with God? I don't see how you're going to do it. I don't see how you are going to do it. This is a sure sign that we are not worshiping. When we lose sight of God, we become hard and dogmatic. We hurl our own petitions at God's throne and dictate to Him as to what we wish Him to do. We do not worship God, nor do we seek to form the mind of Christ. If we are hard towards God, we will become hard towards other people. Are we so worshiping God that we rouse ourselves up to lay hold on Him, that we may be brought into contact with His mind about the ones for whom we pray? Are we living in a holy relationship to God? Or are we hard and dogmatic? But there is no one interceding properly then be that one yourself. Be the one who worships God and who lives in holy relationship to Him. Get into the real work of intercession and remember it is work. A work that taxes every power, but a work which has no snare. Preaching the gospel has a snare. Intercess intercessory prayer has none. Uh, how you've talked lately about intercessory prayer um, you, know, you talk about intercessory prayer quite often just, and again just here lately and the whole, our whole families uh, how we all need to worship 
you know, worship God. Um, get involved in worship and in prayer. How beneficial it is. And I, you know, I, I believe he's right that um, the two have got to go together. And you can't have one without the other. You can't just, uh, I think I'll get an intercessory prayer and, you know, you have no idea what you're praying for. Yeah, that's not true. Mm -hmm. So we need to, truly do need to get into that, that realm and that atmosphere. I think it's a, I think it's a conscientious decision though, because, you know, we've we've been serving the Lord for almost three decades, now. and over that course of time, we have experienced. Uh, different plateaus of, uh, I'm going to use this term but because it, I think it's applicable, w w spiritual training. You know, we've, we've, we've experienced different levels of being in connection with God through prayer mm -hmm. and through worship. And we've experienced some phenomenal moments with Him. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you would think that that would just continually drive you to keep that going. But because we are human beings and we're so flawed and so easily distracted, mm -hmm. that we have, to, we have to totally be conscientious and dec decisive each and every day. It doesn't matter, you know, I may have had the greatest experience yesterday with the Lord in prayer. Um, and have felt used in prayer by him. But if I don't determine in my heart that there's got to be another time that I'm reaching for him, mm -hmm. or that when I'm reaching for him and I don't feel him, that I'm going to continue to reach for him, because yep. you'll you'll sink down to a lower plateau, and it's hard to climb out of that. You know, that's yep. we've experienced that over and over. We we get connected with the Lord. And life happens, and before we know it, we're, we're having to climb back up to right. get to that higher level of connection to Him. Um, not performance based, no, but no. but relationship based. We let you know? things get get in the way. We let things bog us down. We can't say, and I'm going to use your words against you from the other day. We can't say to God, God, you know, and this is something that He's brought to my mind. Uh, a lot lately. I can't wake up every morning and say, say the the one part of the Shema, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and I will mm -hmm. serve the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my might. You know what he's been saying to me many mornings lately when that comes out of my mouth? Are you really doing that? And you know how in order you have to look and say, I'm mm. like lying. Every morning I say this, and I don't intend to do what I'm saying. I mean, that's, you get yourself in a dangerous position when you are, we don't realize that your words have meanings. And if you're going to say these things over and over, so you mm -hmm. can't say, we can talk anytime. Well, yeah, we can talk anytime, but if you make time, you know, well, we can, Laura, you can, I want to pray, I want to be an intercessor. Okay, do you really? Because that's going to cost you. Right. You know, I want right. to be used in fasting. Okay, do you really? Because that's going to cost you. If you say you want that, and I'm calling you to it, and you'll say, oh, man, I just made that chocolate cake. <laughs> Look at all that frosting. Lord, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Aww. So I just, I think that our our spiritual life is a, it's a, it is a major discipline. That's what the Bible is all about. It's it's major self discipline so mm -hmm. that we can excel to those levels and be used in ways. And we're so worried about the flesh and earthly things, you know, that chocolate cake or or, or whatever yeah. that we we sacrifice our eternity. You know? Well, that, that's it right yeah. there, and I, that's not, I don't think that's understated at all. I mm -hmm. think that those are choices. Every day we make a choice. We are mm -hmm. deciding if we're going to sacrifice our eternity or if we're going to 
hold up to our commitment as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it and it does come as a you know it does cost. It does cost. A good marriage isn't something that just happens. The people work on it. The couple works on it. Mm -hmm. A good family relationship isn't just something that happens. The parents work on it with the children. Teach the children how to work on it with the parent. It just it it you just don't get lucky, you know. Right. And yeah. It's the same with our walk with the Lord. Yeah. You know, people that yeah. we see that we admire, they've worked hard. They've sacrificed. They've they've been obedient, and they've looked for things and ways to serve and give. And there's a, there's just a, a sacrifice that happens, an obedience, mm -hmm. a cost. Yeah, and I do uh, you know, appreciate your encouragement with as often as you talk about the intercessory prayer you know, and, and worship. That is encouraging to hear you talk about that. And talk is cheap. Well, talk is cheap, but it's encouraging to hear, you know. But we do need to apply. We do. I need to apply. This, this family needs to apply you know, worship and intercessory prayer. You know, so we do, we get so caught up in the daily, yeah, just the daily duties. And before we know it, another day has gone by and, uh, you know, not only did I not get a lot of the daily, or daily duties done, I didn't get anything spiritually done either. You know, which, which of the two is really more important? Well, it's nothing, it's nothing that, that anybody cannot do. The Lord does not. Um, things that we feel Him leading us to do may seem impossible for us to do, which without Him they are impossible for us to do. But He's not having us do things that He's not going to be there for us to strengthen us to do. You know? So... Um, not, uh, he's not going to ask us to do anything that he's not going to give us the strength not to do. He will be there for us to strengthen us and to encourage us. <clears throat> well, we've got to take that first step, don't we? We do. And he'll be there encouraging us to take the next step. Do you believe that? It's awful quiet. Yes. Do you believe? <laughs> I believe. I guess I do uh, encourage us not to grow hard you know, towards God. Just, we need to stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost and Worship him, not be intimidated or, or uh, uh, just not wanting to get into intercessory prayer. Just something we need to truly seek to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Father, we love and praise you today. Lord, I pray that uh, we would truly uh, seek you know, to truly worship you and enter into intercessory prayer, Lord. There are so many, so many people that need your prayers, Father. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would help me and this family to truly seek after you, worship you. You are so worthy. You are so worthy to be worshipped. Lord, just help us to get to where you want us to be, Father. Lord, we give you the praise and honor today. In your most high name we pray. Amen.